you cannot be a hero without fear. If, if you have fear and you overcome the fear and do what you're supposed to do, that's a hero. I'm Dick Donald, World War II and Korea. I was on the DE-416, Destroyer Escort. I was a sonar man. Uh, most of us were musicians because you're th working with sound. That's what they call us ping jockeys. You send out a ping and if it would hit something and come back to you, you had to quickly analyze. You had to analyze fast because the next thing would be a torpedo if it were a sub. You couldn't think for five seconds. Make up your mind, good sound or not, hit the button, and you've saved the ship, maybe. We spent most of our time in the Pacific hunting for subs, Japanese subs, fighting kamikaze planes, where these people were taught only to take off, never to land. Once they took off, they weren't coming back. What does that make you think of? Well, the answer is 9-11. Those fellas want no part in landing. We're off the 10 miles off Iwo Jima, 10 miles out at sea. Off. We had the whole fleet with us. We were bombing Iwo Jima 24 hours a day. You almost gave up coming back. We were being attacked every morning at dawn and every evening at dusk. We had 75 kamikaze planes attack us to Bismarck Sea. That was the one that we used to escort quite often. That got hit and two hours it was gone, sunk. The Bismarck Sea <clears throat> got hit at six o'clock right alongside of our ship. It was right, right by it. We were right alongside of it. All of our training went out the window. We were, the kids were running around the deck like chickens with their heads off. I asked the captain, could I go down and try to get these people organized? And he said, yes, do it. And we, we got down to this chaos, and instead of doing something, I joined in the chaos. I ran to the back of the ship without thinking and jumped in the, into the water to rescue guys. And as soon as I hit the water, fear took over. I'm thinking the Pacific is shark infested. I, I thought about the sharks. I'd hear a scream now and then and realize it was shark. All kinds of noise, guns going off. Remember you have tons and tons of powder. You have torpedoes, torpedo planes exploding on the main deck. These guys are swimming towards me from the carrier I'd go out, I'd get one, I'd bring him into my ship, and the guys would help him aboard. I must have maybe picked up 10 guys. And then all of a sudden, my attention came to the, the bow of the, of the carrier. This kid was hanging on an anchor, and he was stark naked. <clears throat> and we had our searchlights on him, and his skin just looked like the whitest of ivory just a young kid and our gunnery mate <clears throat> was trying to get him to let loose and there was people in the water to rescue him and he'd scream back <clears throat> I, I, I can't swim I mean he, he was terrified I can't swim <clears throat> and the last thing I remember is the bow the ship went down totally on fire there was airplane fuel we had two kamikaze planes hit it one hit the airplane fuel in the back end of the ship and when that went off we had a night ball game but just everything was just they could see the fire from Iwo Jima. Our ship was so close that we got damaged ourselves and had a lip into Iwo Jima the next morning and when we went into the harbor we found arms, legs, heads, and for a 19-year-old kid, that's something you don't forget. We were damaged. 
and we put the bow on Yellow Beach, right on the beach, directly below Sarabachi. And we were there, and we, could, we were watching these Marines with the flamethrowers, because they, they'd put the flamethrower into a tunnel, and they'd, they'd, you could smell the burning flesh. That's where I learned to love the Marines, their, their fighting instinct, and they were getting a hell of a beating. At that time, the morale was dead low. And during that time, up goes that flag. The Marines took off their helmets. They start cheering. We start blowing the whistles on our ship. <clears throat> I'm 19. It's my fifth invasion. And for the very first time, it really hit me with tears in my eyes. That flag was absolutely beautiful. The sun was as bright as could be, and here's this flag on top of the mountain. And it hit me why we kids were willing to die for that flag. And over 400,000 of us never came back for that flag. That's the love we had for the flag. We had tears in our eyes, a lot of us kids. Uh, for what, what we went through and what the Marines were going through, naturally would have to feel some emotion. Mm -hmm.